Good afternoon. We're in Parsons. We're at the Parsons Historical Society. Right. And I'm here today with Ken Irwin. Irvin or Irwin? It's E R V I N, Irvin. Irvin, Ken Irvin. And Ken, uh, Ken has been instrumental in everything that goes on at this museum and at the Arboretum here in Parsons. And I wanted to take an opportunity to, to let him tell me something about the museum and about his involvement with it. And we're going to take us a little time here and just walk through the museum. Ken, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Good. I'm 97 years old, and uh, I, I've been a member of this museum for more than 35 years. And uh, this is a, a Boy Scout display we made. And uh, I was a scout leader for 20 some years, and I was a silver beaver. Is this your, you said this was That's your- my mission. uniform. As a, as a scout leader? And uh, uh, I went to uh, the World Game Jamboree in 1957, and I, I, I have all the different scout badges. And uh, not only was I uh, an Eagle Scout, but uh, Silver Beaver is the highest award you can get as a volunteer, and this is my son's uniform. This is the Boy Scout uniform that yeah. your son wore, right here. And this is his uh, Cub Scout uniform. Mm hmm And in the early days, they had a Sea Scouts, and I also was a member of Sea Scout Ship 333 Katy in 1940. And this here is my uh, it's the, well, I've never seen some of these badges here. This yeah, one in the corner, what's Scotland. that? All right. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Oh, you got all these badges. Are yeah. these all your badges? We, we or had your son's? one of the scouts, Bill Brewer, that every year he made a different badge. And then we had them made where the kids could wear them. That's great. Okay, let's move over in the other, and I'll show you more Scout stuff. Okay. I wouldn't have to go over here and turn the lights on, but we're going that way. We're going this way here, huh? Yeah, so just All righty. Well, this is, we're in the museum here now, in the main museum. It's huge, and there's lots of stuff here from all over. Oh, my goodness. There's no way we're going to cover all of this today, but I want you to get an idea of what's here. And they do, you do keep regular hours here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? That's right. And you can we, come we over here from, and look uh, through this. You'll see April some... April till October. From April to October. Mm -hmm. So... And, and here's some more Scout stuff. These are all different cups. There's one of my uh, Explorer uniforms, and that's my son's. And this, uh, uh, uh huh. And then I've got a, I show all the different kinds of backpacks, the scout troops. And in 1957. We went to the World Jamboree in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And, and this uh, is you. This, huh? this is the tent I slept in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at Valley Forge. So you slept at Valley Forge. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? And, and when we were Explorer Scouts, this here's a Explorer uniform. That was mine. And then these different things I... I Whoa. got from different people. Wow. This museum we built on, and this was the last 
next to the last room we made it started here and it goes back to that wall and when Mr. Stiebe was a fire chief he gave us this fire truck and I drove it in here and then when we were uh, boy I had a boy scout troop and we did Indian dancing and we made this teepee here And I fixed this teepee so uh, we could have a fire inside. Uh huh. And the control broke, and I'm in the process of putting a new control in it. But that would light up, and it, the kids could push a button, and it would run for five minutes, and then it'd turn off. <laughs> so, and yeah. this is one of the newest displays we got Rich Prill who just retired from a state representative. Okay. Oh, and that's a little thing from his office. Yeah. And that was at the state house in Topeka. How do you like that? Well, look at the hot air balloon. <laughs> this airplane is a replica. It's half size of an ATC-6 at World War II that flew out of Coffeyville as an army plane and out of Independence as a navy plane. <laughs> and that's the reason they built the airport west of Parsons was a landing and taking off. And me and Merlin made that airplane. You, you made this? Yeah, and uh, it's made out of balsa wood and it weighs 27 pounds. The whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's well, amazing. Well, you see how I got it hanging? It's hanging by wires, just a few <laughs> little wires holding the whole thing up. Yeah. At 27 pounds. <laughs> is this from a circus here, this sign? Oh. What, what is this, an advertising sign? I tell you where that came from. Uh, the Methodist Church at Strauss gave us that, and they used to have a stage. Uh -huh. and, and then behind the stage, it was about eight feet where they could put our program. It was a backdrop, yeah. Yeah. And so th this, this uh, Code's welding, I knew uh, Mr. Code, uh, you know, because he, he run a welding shop in Parsons. Right now we're the, uh, at the alley where the Labet Bank is okay well it just caught my eye i thought that's a that's a real nice piece there nice piece of work yeah all right and, and this is uh all the records the voting records when they kept them in books uh -huh. uh, of everybody that voted from the beginning and the county gave us these and so we've got them on two sides. And if you know what precinct and what ward and precinct is in, you can look it up and see where you, <laughs> who voted and when. It doesn't tell what they voted for, just yeah. that they voted, right? Yeah. And this is the plane that you made? This is a, a little bit yeah, about th it? Yeah, this is the one that Merlin made, <laughs> ATC-6. Hey, that's, in fact, that's, this one is half the size, and you can see the bullets. See, that's all uh, uh -huh. balsa wood. And these are all pictures of the model. There's no picture of the original yeah. here. Okay, and then I'm going to turn around here and give you one more look at the plane. All right, good. All right, and now we're headed back into the next room this this was the last room we built on to this building mm -hmm. because next to it is the, the railroad museum and we raise money let me show you the okay well look at there there's the old soapbox here's people that donated money to uh -huh. build this room and, and everything in it Okay. 
I'll try and take a picture of that. That'd be pretty hard. <laughs> oh, you never know. Okay. And, and so what we did, uh, this is a storage room, and this is Merlin Taylor. When he went in the feed and uh, fertilizing business, uh, you know, he had quite an operation. Did you know Merlin? No, no, I didn't. Well, he, he's still alive. His wife died. But uh, in, in 1950, this is the very first sacking machine he made. And then he, he made them all automatic. But he, in his uh, business, he made sheets uh, th that filled uh, uh, breakfast food where they'd want to put so many ounces of this and so many ounces of that. Uh -huh. And these big machines would automatically uh, pick the bag up, fill the bag, and seal the bag. And he did it for uh, all the manufacturers that were manufacturing uh, breakfast food. And also he had a line where he filled bags of dog feed uh -huh. and cattle feed. And this is the very first bagger he had, which it was. I like this. This bag is completely made, and they've got it set so it just opens up uh, by stretching it there, and the, and it, the machine shoots it in there. Yeah. And then I guess it must be glued back down together, huh? But, After but that. he made, uh, and this is a miniature, one, and you know he 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 even made them and sold them to Japan, and so there's a bunch of. People uh, from uh -huh. Japan uh -huh. in, that came, and he had an airplane, and, and he'd fly all over the country. <laughs> and his name is, what did you say his name was? Merlin Taylor. Merlin Taylor. Yeah. And, and this was his business, uh, Taylor yeah, Liquid his Feed? It, it's still operating. And they're making uh, a lot of different things. Now they make bags that uh, uh, four bags can go on a railroad car full of grain oh, and, and, the, and ship it overseas. Oh, it makes big bags, so they can probably makes it easier to move that way. That's right. Huh? So he's <laughs> doing that now. Uh -huh. And uh, Labette Bank. Uh, uh -huh. Where are you looking at? I don't now? know if you know Bill Wyckoff uh, that runs Levette Bank. I'm afraid I don't know. You know, I worked in Parsons for 25 years, but I... Well, he, he, he's the president of all uh, Levette banks. Oh, okay. And he gave us this bank here. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you got this desk and everything, huh? And his dad started the banking business in, in 1915. And there's the vault door that was off of the bank in Aldemont. And now they have banks all over. Up in the other section, you had a much older bank, didn't you? No, you had no, some I, sort of I maybe had a, a safe. A safe, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And that safe came out of upstairs of the used to be the First National Bank. And so uh, he gave us all of this. And this here is the early days when, when this here had a top to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I see there's yeah windows up there or something. Yeah, yeah that's... and this is out of that Aldemont. All right, and good. then I made these mannequins. I didn't make these two mannequins. But you dressed them. <laughs> but now I'm in the process of doing that. Let me turn on the light.
this is a uh, business and business and manufacturing companies. And so uh, I've wrote a lot of stories and uh, th this is the beginning of the 1957 a Twin Valley at Aldemont, uh and, and they're still operating. And so this is some of the first stuff of them. And then, in the early 1800s, Labet City was larger than Parsons. And where was Labet City? And, and, uh, these here, uh, there were three brothers uh -huh. that came to the United States from Germany in the early 1800s, and they started out in Chicago, and their parents uh, sent them to here because they didn't want to be in the French Revolutionary War. And so I wrote a story on them, and uh, this was their store in Labette City, and today the foundation of this store is still there. But up above it was the Oddfellas Lodge 488. Mm -hmm. And so and today, in 21, I talked to the mayor of Labette City and a bunch of people that, that lived there. And so the Rebos uh, were real early people in, in, in this area. And, and this is where, uh, this is where they're buried in, in Labette City. And then I did a story on neighborhood grocery stores in Parsons. You know, we used to have one every few blocks. And now, uh, I have a list of all of them, the grocery stores. At one time, we had 58 neighborhood grocery stores between 1920 and 50, because uh, people didn't drive cars, they walked to the grocery store. I, I, and today, yeah. we've got uh, uh, out of the 58, I, I did have how many we had still standing. But, but oh, all, some of these, these buildings are, are still, still there. All these are still standing. I went around and took pictures of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and this is a guy that was a real supporter, and his dad was the scoutmaster, Dan Devine, and this is about their family. And in 1927, he was an Eagle Scout in Troop 8 at, at the St. Pat's Church in Parsons. And he's a silver beaver, and a scoutmaster, and this is where they borrowed a uh, Katie truck for the kids to all go camping. <laughs> and then the peat filling stations, you know all the peat filling stations? Uh, I'd heard of them. No, yeah, I don't well, know much about them. Anyway, I did a story on peats. Oh, peats. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know peats. Yeah. So this is his truck stop. And then on the back side, uh, when I did this, he had uh, 25 uh, stores that were open 24 hours a day. And, and you know, him and his dad started with one station in Erie, Kansas. Oh, I remember in that same station right on the highway there. That's right. Yeah, and, and, and they've taken over now the, the truck stop, the uh, gas station at, at Cherokee, and they said they're going to make a... Uh, uh, truck stop out of that. Yeah. Yeah, they're still expanding. Uh, and this is a history. Uh, my dad, my grandpa uh, had an automobile store on Main Street in 1903. That was a, a real car. And, and this here was a cigar store. And this was a cleaning and pressing. Yeah. And today, this part here 
you can see the top in the top here. This is a jewelry store, and believe it or not, here's a cigar store. That's today. <laughs> <laughs> so they're still selling cigars. Yeah. Well, that's real nice. Inflation Company was a big company. What was the name of it? And, and uh, my dad had the first oh, commercial the radio company. station in the city of, in the uh, state of Kansas. And I remember when the fire in the Orson Theater burned, because my dad had a shop right across the street, and it was a Conoco service station there. And the next morning, this here was going to fall in, and the fire department took their ladder wagon down, and a guy got up on it and started punching them rocks out, and the ladder wagon broke, and he fell to the ground and killed him. And I was there and saw that. Oh, golly. So this is the Orphan Theater. And, but the story I want to tell you, now where that, that Orphan Theater was, is the Parsonian Hotel, and this is a parking lot. <clears throat> and when my dad had his radio station in 1922, he had a windmill tower 12 feet high on top of this, and he had it over here on the, the, the Kansas Power and Light Company at 1809 uh, Broadway. He had another tower, and upstairs is where he had his radio station that he'd come on every night and advertise. <laughs> Good deal. And that was on, and this, this building here, Orpheum Theater, that's this building here. This is the Orpheum Theater. And this, this here, this is a this different... This is the Orpheum Theater after it caught fire and burned. This is that same building? That's right. Oh, it's from the other angle. I see the, yeah. the circles see now up there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now I see it's the same building. Okay. I yeah. Can, okay. And this building here is still there. Mm -hmm. It's a beer joint <laughs> today. Okay. Alrighty. And then we've got uh, all the displays in this room was built by a team of men. And uh, th this is the Masonic Lodge. And my dad was a, and I was a Mason. And we belonged to Knight Templar, and that was my dad's uniform at Knight Templar when they used to march in different towns. Here, let me turn the light on. And he's got a nice badge there with a bunch of uh, Dodge City, Pittsburgh, Wichita, Galena, all these different cities. Where though it, at Knight Templar is that in in charge? It's over the other lodges, over the Blue Lodges. Yeah. And and these were the different were these yeah. the different lodges that were they were over. Yeah, Blue Lodge. I, I'm I'm still a member of the Blue Lodge. Mm -hmm. I joined the Masons when I was 21, and that was my dad's uniform. And I have my uniform at home. <laughs> oh, and there's your shrine. That's, what? This is your Arab, uh, Arab oh, this, stuff. This is just some of the different Masonic. Yeah, these are Shriners wear that yeah. kind of stuff. Huh? Yeah, and here's your Bahia and Mirza Shrine. And, and I belong to the Mirza Temple in Pittsburgh. That's right. Oh, uh, you see that uh, Sputnik? Yes, sir. Uh, when that was popular, my dad made that. And I've got a electric motor scooter underneath it mm -hmm. that we made. It used to have a gas <laughs> engine when it And we put a, three batteries in it and a 1918 starter generator off of a Dodge. And so when you push the button, it'd go. And when you turn the button off, it'd die. It'd stop. <laughs> just so you could, just enough and, battery and so power to get you through the parade. I drove that in a parade at Pittsburgh in the Shrine Parade. 
<laughs> very nice. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. Uh, it, 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 this here over here is uh, my dad's business, or, or my business, I guess I should say, when I was in the automotive business, and uh, we, my dad was real good. Here's a machine we made to wind electric motor windings on. And in uh, 2000, uh, in April 2000, the tornado, this is my building and here it is afterwards. That's right. I was working here in town when that happened. I wasn't here in town. I was out of town, but I worked in Parsons at that time. Uh, and and uh, my grandpa, the first cars he sold were Briscoe. And then this is a, and we sold campers and boats and motors. And we had a boat show every year for a number of years. <laughs> and then... Well, that's not three generations of Irvin family business. Yeah. From livery stable to automotive repair, serving Parsons for 94 years. And there's Charles E. Shorty Irvin, Claude and Rose Irvin, and Kenneth L. Irvin. Yeah. Well, now, oh, that was the years you operated that business. Yeah. And that's you at the bottom there. That's not when you die. That's when you quit doing business. Huh? <laughs> that's when you run the business. Oh, good. Urban garage. Oh, he here's a picture of this uh, motor scooter. Uh huh. It was a Cushman, and we uh, we put batteries in it and had it rebuilt it at Labette County High School. It did all the welding. And that clock is the clock that uh, was our time clock in the business when the tornado hit, and that's when the electricity went off. At uh, nine minutes to nine. Yeah. And these are all different kind of instruments my dad made. Uh, well, he's winding electric motors. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, and then this here, here's some of our early day boat shows that we used to have. Uh-huh. We'd have them every spring. These are two of my daughters, <laughs> and this Dwight Kiefer, he was going to Pittsburgh State, and he'd come over and demonstrate uh, how to fish, uh, uh, and fishing poles and fishing rods, oh. and uh, he, he was in a real bad accident, and then he moved to Arizona, and he, he came back to look at these pictures, <laughs> and uh, a, a guy that he used to fish with in the pits that went to Pittsburgh with him, and he decided to move back to Parsons, and now he lives in the high rise in Parsons. Okay. And he still sells antique tack tackle and fishing poles. <laughs> and these are a lot of the, the different uh, muzzle loaders and fish and tackle people. These, these were the state uh, wildlife, Department yeah, of Wildlife, wildlife people. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and this is when I got a load of boats. Uh, it was 26 below zero. Oh, my goodness. And, and the load of boats were $26,000. And to get them out of uh, Little Falls, Minnesota, it cost uh, nine hundred dollars. That wasn't bad then. That wasn't bad. Okay. Oh, this here. 
my grandpa on 1720 uh, Washington had the first gasoline pump that was on the street. They used to have it in barrels, and this was inside where people didn't. Uh, it, he had a livery stable first, and then when people got into cars, they didn't have a garage. So in the early days, they would store their garage and come get it on weekends. Oh, okay. Yeah. They didn't use the car every day. Yeah. And this is my grandpa and my dad in a little shop at 1722 Broadway in 1929. And then this is a shop we had across the street. Uh, and then we put a, a new front in it. Now this is in Parsons on Broadway? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, here's a machine shop and our, some of our tools. Mm -hmm. And then there was a guy named Sam next to this shop. This was just up the top of the hill of the subway that you could get six hamburgers for a quarter. <laughs> well, that is a good price. <laughs> There's your Willard batteries there. There's your little battery-operated scooter. Yeah, and when I got out of college, I went to Wichita, and I taught auto mechanics at North High School. Then they only had two high schools, and I come back one summer, and this was the, what my dad's shop looked like, and in 1950, we put one door in the glass, and that's where I had my, when I came and went back in business with my dad. And these are just some of the motors we wound. And these are just people that work for me. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Yes, so sir. one time I had 18 employees, and I had a parts store, and here we had stalls this side and on the other side, and then this was a parts, and over here were boats and motors, and this is the back of it, so you could drive in from both ways. And then this is when the tornado hit it. Oh, and that hit your shop. That hit your shop, huh? Yeah. Oh, my. This is before and this is after. I see right here before and, and, and then and after. Whew. I bought a building on South 16th. Hey. I still own it, or uh, 800 South 16th. And, and we moved the store down there. And then the guy that I sold the business to went broke. And so today, Fastenal Corporation rents it from me. <laughs> and this is what the building looks like. So that's kind of the story about the Irvins. Well, that's appreciate. You know, that's, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, let me tell you about the guy. We'll go over here and look at it. Okay. Uh, this is a brand new display. Let me turn the light on before you take a picture. <laughs> this place is just loaded with stuff. Here we, we go. made uh, uh, Earl Seifert work for uh, Acretite. Uh, products for years. He's an engineer that made in, in highway concrete, you know, they put the little things with plugs from one to the other where a joint is. Okay. And here, here's the guy. Now you're talking about con that, yeah. concrete and, the, and so plugging here, them up together. In, in, in 1937, he was the Parsons' son, boy, tennis champion. Parsons' son, boy, And then in, in high school, 
he made this uh, wooden chest. Now, who is this? Oh, this, this is Seifert. Don Seifert. Don Seifert, okay. Yeah, and Earl Seifert, his brother, worked for Anchorite and see the uh, the center at the uh, arboretum is named Earl Seifert Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this this is a guy that just died, and uh, we made all the there, there's all the medals. And I got all the history uh, of all the wars he was in. River there's Division. There's a patrol boat in Vietnam that he, he was on. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> now, are we still talking about uh, uh, Seifert? Uh, yeah. Seifert, or we're still no, talking? No, no. This, this, this here, this guy is. Uh, is this man right up here, David Larson? Yeah, David Larson. Yeah. Uh huh. And he was in two or three wars, and there's all his medals. Okay. And we're just now doing this museum. This is a new display here. Yeah. In fact, I still got my my, my drills because we're going to do some more more <laughs> work on it. We're still working in here. Good yeah. deal. Oh, look at all the river division. There's a whole bunch more on a. Looks like a, yeah, a biker and, and vest. This, this display here has got this jacket. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting ready to hang it up where you can see both sides of it. Uh huh. So here's one side. Uh huh. Yeah, that's nice. And then here's the other. And, okay. The nation which forgets its defenders will. Yeah. So that'll be hanging up here in the ceiling. Okay. All righty. And there's a nice pea coat. Yeah. And this is this still now Dave Larson then? Um. It looks like he was in the Navy. Yeah, he's in the Navy. And he went to Vietnam and uh, <laughs> Well, do you want to go over in the other building? Sure, let's go ahead. Let's okay. go ahead. Well, the front door is locked, so I'm gonna go ahead. Why don't I go ahead and shut this off and we'll start again over there. Okay. Okay, we're doing now the second part of this video. We're in what used to be the main, the Iron Horse Museum, which has now moved to the new building. That's right. But this is still a, a railroad museum over here. And uh, I'm with Ken Irvin. And, uh, uh, well, we, uh, we've got information about Zazu Pitts. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Silent screen television actress. And uh, <clears throat> William Coleman, here he is. Well, now Zazu Pitts was, was Zazu Pitts. Was she from here? Was she from this area? Oh yeah, or? yeah, Zazu Pitts. That's why you're interested in her because yeah, she's from her here. And her mother moved to Kansas City. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. And but then she you, was in silent movies. Okay, and then you say this here is. And, and there's Mr. Coleman. Oh okay. Of the Coleman Theater? A, a Coleman, yeah. And until a few years ago, the little mantles, they still made them in Mount, Mount Valley, uh -huh. Kansas. He's working on something there. <laughs> then you were going to, you were going to tell me something about this shoe. Here, here's Buck Clayton and uh, Claude Ryan built the airplane, the Spirit of St. Louis. And he was a friend of my dad. Oh, okay. And they used to take uh, motorcycle engines and uh, make a stand on a tree and then put a propeller on it. And my dad would get behind the tree and they would adjust the carburetor to get the speed up on the motorcycle. And then they'd put it in an airplane. So my parents went to San Diego from, my, my mom worked at the Katy Hospital, 
my dad worked for a man here in town uh, cutting wheels down from big wheels to the smaller, more popular 16-inch wheels. And in 1940, they got married and moved to San Diego, and they worked at Ryan Aircraft. Is that for, right? For uh, all, all during the war. Hmm. Yeah. Now, you were telling me about this shoe. What were you going to tell me about this shoe here? Well, Robert Wadlow uh, shoe. And uh, the reason we got that shoe is number size 27. And here's a, oh, here I got a better picture of him. 37 inch shoe. Oh, here's a nice model here somebody made. Okay. Well, he, here's a rubber. Pershing Wadlow. Yeah, and uh, this picture here is taken uh, and there's Piper's jewelry store right there. And he came to town because this uh, a shoe store made his shoes. And they let school out. And when this picture was taken, I was in the eighth grade. And I went down there, all the kids. Shoe size 37 inches long, AA. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the people... They all come out from, they quit school and come out from school for the day yeah. to see this, this guy's foot. <laughs> yeah, and see how tall he is. And he went all over the country. Uh, they, uh, they drove him around in a, a 1937 Plymouth. Uh -huh. And the Plymouth had it where they could take the center post out. And he'd sit in the back seat and his feet would be in the front seat. Of course. <laughs> well, what, I guess he was, he was he eight foot tall or just seven something? Oh, yeah. I wonder how tall he was. Huh. No, it doesn't say exactly. Is he Smith's shoe store? But a size 37 inch long double A. Yeah. It's a narrow foot for yeah. a... The <laughs> tallest man in the world. Gentleman giant in the world. <laughs> And his family, the rest of the brothers and sisters, was just normal size. Uh, here's a story I made on the inner urban. Uh huh. Inner urban and trolley. Yeah, the, the uh, history of the inner urban trolley. It, it went from Parsons to Nowata, and it had all these stops. And, and now out at uh, Fern, Kansas, I've got a sign that tells about the inner urban where it comes into Parsons. And you know, they used to all have freight cars. They go right down the middle of West Maine. Okay. And uh, Freight cars? So today, this is what Fern looks like. And I made some signs I got out of Fern. And, and you could, I used to ride this from Parsons to Fern and get off because I, I had a cousin that lived right across from the station. The and Safety I'd, Cab Company. Yeah. <laughs> in 1912. And they would stop and pick up milk and stop and pick up passengers anywhere. All you got to do is flag them down. I had an Uncle Ray who was a cab driver in Parsons. Back in, you know, 39. See, so, so you'd 40. ride for a one and a quarter cent per mile. There you go. <laughs> Let me turn the light on in this room. I got to get in the closet to do that. I 
I got this here bell, and I fixed it up so kids could ring it. <laughs> I need to charge this battery. <laughs> but we got this here from a guy up north of Erie. In, uh, Is that called he, a... He donated it. Call that a Buddha car, don't you? Uh, That's a, yeah, it's, a track it a service car. Motor car off the Frisco. Several like that over at the... And uh, they all had a Fairmont engine in them. A Paramount, huh? Oh, there, oh Fairmont, there it is. Okay. Oh, let me tell you a story about this guy. This John Ellis, uh, that's, that's him sitting there when he was two years old on the front of number two, Katie. Well, uh, they had a uh, class reunion, mm -hmm. uh, and they had about 500 people come, uh, golden anniversary over 50 years, and he came, and I met him, and I, I, I hear from him all the time. Okay. He, he lives in Texas. <laughs> and. And when he was t two, he lived down on Appleton, right off of 21st Street. And then what's this lower picture here? Yeah. Is that the, uh, hmm. And here's the whistle that used to be up at the round, by the round house at the powerhouse that they'd blow every morning and noon and every night. And I'm a Jean Booker coach, lives in Springfield, and she was in my class. And her dad is the one that used to blow that whistle. And how did that function? What, what the, how did that whistle oh, work? Uh, uh, steam. The bottom, it, it had steam come up through it. Uh-huh, that's what I was suspecting, something like that. And how did they, did they have, just hook it up to a steam engine that was going yeah, somewhere they else? A, Is it part of the... Pull the thing and... Let the steam run through there and make a noise. They said if the wind was right, uh, you could hear the whistle blow in Alamont, Kansas, 10 miles. Well, they tell me that back in the mining days and when the trains were big around here running all the time, that these, these towns ran on whistles. Yeah. The whistles would tell them when to start work, stop work, lunch, oh, everything. They, they still, to back up, they, they whistle it three times. Oh, for reverse? Yeah. On a train? Yeah. Okay. Three, three, three blows on the whistle means you're backing up. Well, let's see. We'll go over to the other building. Well, we didn't get that front room in here, the entry. I want to take a walk through here and just show a picture of what we got here, and I'll go back towards the door. See and plenty to plenty to learn in here. Where was the guy that did the Harley Davidson? Ken, you had a man that uh, made his first bi a motorcycle here in Parsons. Just a minute, I can't hear you. Sorry. That's all right. This man Walter Davidson. Walter Davison, he made uh, a motorcycle here oh, in Parsons yeah, yeah. before he started. Before he went and started making Harley Davisons. That's right. He he worked in the back shops and made the very first engine. And then uh, his daughter came here one time, and we had a meeting, uh -huh. and she brought the, this stuff I got back here on this shelf. Oh, okay. These are little replicas. This here? Yeah, very that's nice. a Harley Davidson. That's very nice. A replica. Nice. 
Uh huh. Very nice. Uh huh. Yeah, I was always I was interested in that story when you told me last time. That's amazing. That really, the of course Harley Davidson's weren't made here, but the very first motorcycle, the man that yeah that uh, created that company, he started right here in Parsons. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. All right, I'm going to shut this down, and we'll start again over at the other building. Yeah, we're going over in the uh, new Iron Horse building. Good enough. Okay, we're now we're in the new Iron Horse Museum. This is the newest building on the... Uh, on the place here, yeah. and we're with Ken Ir Irvin, and we're doing the third we, in a uh, three-part uh, video. We, uh, this building is 120 by 60 foot, and it, on each side it has side outsides. It's 20 foot by 160. Oh, it's got the coverings on the outside, yeah. 20 foot extra wide. So all together it's, uh, uh, what, a uh, hundred foot wide and 120 foot long. Yeah, and we what I'm in the process now of making a mannequin to go over in the other building for this David Larson. Uh -huh. But I'm making it over here because I got everything I need. So you got room, but, too. Uh, I made this mannequin and that's the first time I ever made a mannequin sitting down. You don't just buy a mannequin and use it. You make the mannequin. Oh yeah, I, I make the mannequin from scratch. <laughs> and what do you make? Here, what do you make it out of? Uh, well, styrofoam or right wood now, or what? I make it out of two befores, and here's the shoes I'm going to put on this this Dave guy Larson. over there, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take off my coat. But I want to show you the bathrooms. Okay, well that's <laughs> that, that's a big attraction. Everybody wants to have bathrooms. Well, how'd you come by this horse? Look at that horse. Oh, uh, let me tell you about this horse. This buggy came out of the other building, and it's 150 years old. Uh huh. And. Uh, the gloves in the blanket in the back was donated by Dr. C.H. Markham, who is the eyes and ears and throat doctor. Okay. And you can see here. Bear gloves. Yeah, bear gloves. And here's a bear blanket. And down here is a heater that had early days in an automobile. Would they put uh, coal or something in there or what? Yeah, they put a little, uh, not coal, but uh, they got some kind of a little fuel they could put in it. <laughs> but I, I ordered this horse from Amazon. Oh, okay. And I gave $300 for the horse. <laughs> well, that and then I had a guy get all the harness. <laughs> and that was another 500. Well, it seems like it takes so, a lot to transport it. Huh? Did you have to move it very far? Oh, he came in a big box. And it took two weeks to get him. He come from Amazon on the West Coast. <laughs> $300, that seems like it cost that much to move him. <laughs> so then I, I put this here this here on him, so he wouldn't fall over. And this is a bear skin here. Okay. And this is to stabilize the horse down here, the yeah. wood, yeah. And you did that. Yeah, I made those, and, and see, we got these little things. You're a pretty handy you fellow, see, Ken. Yeah, I screwed him through the floor. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do a lot of stuff, I'm telling you. You do well, good I work. Well, I have a lot of help. <laughs> yeah, let me show you all my help. Okay. I want to turn this light on over here.
This is a bunch of tools that uh, was in a display case. Clint and Kim and, and Ball. I, I'll show you the display case, but they were in the bottom and you couldn't see them. So I put them over here. Yeah, yeah, no block. Yeah. And then let, let me show you uh, up here. This here building uh, is down on Highway 59 and 400, and it was rebuilt. And there was a guy that was a doctor at the state hospital. And him and I went out to the farm where this building was. And, and then the people donated, and this is the history on it. And, and then we had uh, some stonemasons, and that's standing up right on 59 Highway and 400, just south of Pete's. Uh, uh, yeah, this is just being created here. This place is in, right in the middle of, of uh, construction uh, around here. Sheep shearing the machine. The Monison family go to the Dennis Methodist Church, and they donated this. And there's the shears. It took four people to shear a sheep. See, the one to turn this crank, one to work the shears, one to gather the wool, and one to put it in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a, yeah, that's early days there. Yeah. And then here's another shearing machine. So one had to turn the crank to make the shears go. <laughs> and then they gave it. me all this stuff too. How you sharpen a bar on a mower. All right. All right. Yeah, I want to in the process of making this, it kind of shows. Here's where we had our open house when they dedicated the building. And all the workers, I gave them a plaque. I gave 21 of these out to people that, that worked on the project, and here they're all lined up. And here's Chuck Markwith right there. Okay. And there you are, on the mic. Yeah, and, and this is this here, he furnished all the chairs, and that, that's a Crooks, that run Crooks Hardware. His, his dad was Jigs Crooks. Mm -hmm. And then I want to show you in the women's bathroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is groundbreaking stuff, folks. We're and going see, to the women's I, bathroom. My nine guys built all this. Find the light switch. What do you think of this? I think we're living pretty good around here. Yeah. And, and we bought these from uh, over here at Door Corporation. They shipped them from Pennsylvania. And Chuck, Chuck put all these together. Chuck put the ceiling in. And Casey Doyle donated the glass, and you, you see the, uh, he drilled a hole in the glass and, and put Mounted that there. Mounted the gojo. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're pretty fancy now, aren't we? Yes, sir. All right. Oh, let me sh see this green wire. Yeah. And that's what goes on my mannequins. Oh, okay. That helps you to make those mannequins, huh? Yeah. And then look in here. This are. Well, there's your work shed. Keep all your paint and stuff in here. There, there's not a nail in this building. They're all screws. Oh, really? The whole thing? And every screw was donated 
by Fastenal Corporation. Every screw, we use thousands of them. Oh, oh well, in there, that's and great. And then this is our storage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And take a look at the men's. Well, I guess we better. Turn the light on. Got to have a little bit of equal treatment here. Looks real good. Yeah. And see, my guys build everything here. In, in the ceilings, it's all two by sixes, and we can put storage up above. <laughs> and we got drinking fountains. Okay, we're back now, Kim. Uh, you had to pay for what now? The electric and the hand. The electric and the heating and cooling. Uh -huh. I, I made it in memory of my wife, and it was donated by me and my family. Okay. And then Merlin Taylor, we dedicated this room in memory of his wife by his family. Uh-huh. All right. And then this is a another display. Uh-huh, a and, lot of tools. And this here is a mannequin I had, and she had red fingernails and earrings and I had I, I repainted her and Megan Hughes dressed her like a, a farm lady <laughs> <laughs> and, and these this is uh, the pump that was out of uh, uh, let's see what's his name uh, oh uh, that's Edwards. All right. Oh, Ed Dickerson Farm. And he was an early day farmer. And then this, this is stuff that was that is full of that, that I got in that other case. But you can see all the different Tools, a lot of tools. We got uh, got them uh, traps. We got some traps. Yeah. Milk bottles. Oh, th tools. this is interesting. Uh, the way they used to measure fields and yardage, a guy'd get on one end of that and that, and they mail the the equipment to, to measure the field and distance. And that's a one that's rod long. Yeah, and in the early day automobiles didn't have a key to run it, it's just a switch. And so this here, you could put on the front wheel and crank it out and take the key out and nobody could run off with your car. <laughs> <laughs> and they would do and it too. And you can see here how, look at the wood screws, early day. Yeah, yeah, they still use those. Yep. Did you know about the Scaletti hardware? No, nope, no, nope, didn't know about Scaletti well, the hardware. Scaletti hardware uh, used to have a hardware store just down east east side of Maine on the south side, and they also were in the sheet metal business. And these sacks came from their hardware, the rack. Paper sack Paper racks. Sacks. Get the size you need. Yeah. <laughs> Stonemason mallet. Yeah. All right. Well, we're moving along pretty good. We just got this one. Well, yeah, here we're all right. And there's your nice boot jack there. This is a safe a guy gave us that uh, was a belong to the Katy Railroad <laughs> in Erie, Kansas. And I had it on, we got a forklift back there. I had it on there and I got this far and it slipped out and so I got to get some help and 
We're going it, to set it up and put it in that corner. It's, it weighs plenty, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pick it up for you. I'm not sure I could. No, I, I, no, I got the equipment to do it, and we we're going to use a a chain, block and tackle. All right, there's your harnesses and different farm equipment here. Yeah, we got a lot of. It. Well, there's an apple press. Information on bob wire, and uh, this is the thing you sit on, and see it—it it would plane off the level of the ground. Oh, you mean you would just pull this? Yeah, you sit on that, and the horse pulls it. And it would—it would look like yeah. a like a grater, yeah. sort of. Yeah. All right. There's your original bob wire. There's a little heater. What do you, what kind of fuel do you use? Kerosene heater there. Yeah, we got all kinds of wagon wheels and uh, uh, cistern pumps. And, and there's a corn sheller. Mm-hmm. That one there. It's got a flywheel on it to help you spin her. Yeah. And this is a forge that they uh -huh. use. And these are cedars that you'd walk along and open and you put the seed in there. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you just stick that down there and yeah. push them together and spread a little hole to put the seed in. <laughs> All right. This is interesting. I mean, there was another apple cider, uh, yeah. apple press down there and run here. This breaks up the yeah, apple. You put it through there and... Grinds it up and puts it down in your press where you press it and get all the juice. Huh? Yeah. Oh, here, oh, this here. It's right hooked up to it. It seems like there'd be some kind of a chute or something to get it from here to here. Yeah. Uh, this here is a, a wooden pipe. It's all hollow. Huh. <laughs> I haven't seen many wooden pipes. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you and, go. And this is... A forge and uh huh. Oh, in Skeletti Hardware, uh, they had all kinds of tin snips on a rack, and we got them out of the hardware. All right. Yeah, let's go out this way. Oh, we're kind of trapped here, Ken. I think we can get out this way, maybe. I don't know if you can come through this way. Kind of tight. Here's a uh, sled. Uh huh. Uh, it's over it's over 200 years old, and uh, Dale Hart donated it, and it was there's your yoke the right there. There's your you yoke. See the oxen. Yep. That pulled it, and they loaded uh, logs on it. All right. In the winter time. Can you get through there, Ken, or you want me to move something here for you? Here. Let me move it. Oh, oh that's, that's all right. Work. I can get through there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm all right. No. <laughs> Don't scare me, Ken. This here's a. We got uh, three tractors, and uh, Bill Wyckoff donated two of them, and the other one. We got a farm all here. Yeah. McCormick farm all. And the reason I got this pulled out here, we're going to put a uh, uh, a mural over there. Uh-huh. Around the corner of a wheat field. Okay. And I know you probably don't know Skip Smith. No, I don't. But he's an artist, and right now he's finishing one up at the college he's been working six months on at the, at the new building at the 
person's junior college. So when he comes, it'll go from that corner around. And that's the reason you see the electric has been dropped down. Mm -hmm. And that's where he's going to put it. So you got a case here. Nice old case there. Yeah. Nice looking. All of these look like they, they work. You can go well, out and run any we, of these. We drove these in. It, these used to be in the other building. It, and at that time, we drove them in there and took the batteries out. Hooked the battery back up and drove them back over here. Yeah. Looked good. <laughs> and then, oh, this oh, looks here, like a here's steam the tractor here. piece of equipment we got. This rake is a wooden rake that... Uh, that was made in the 1800s before they had steel rakes. And we're putting it over in this corner and the farmer stood on it and when they got, it pulled with one horse, there, there's a, where it pulled from. And when it'd get full, it would automatically flip. Aha. Uh -huh. And this is going over in that very corner. Well, I like this thing here. This looks like a steam tractor. Is that what that is? Yeah. That's a beauty. Do you know what what's the, would be the name of that? Woo! And it's got a cover on it. That's high tech there. Got that shade. This is a 1950 um, I forgot how many horsepower steel wheels not going to wear out any rubber on that one oh uh, when we got it we didn't get the uh, the really put the roof on after we got it in here mm -hmm. and you can 1915 Racine, Wisconsin. And see this this burnt wood. It was a wood burn. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. All right. And this is where they stored the wood to to move it up into the fire, huh? Uh, a guy just gave me a belt to put on this. Look at this worm drive. And we're going to run a belt from this pulley over to the thrash machine. And that's the way they would have done it, too. Yeah. And there's Looking your burner there. box right there. Yeah, you can't see nothing in there, but that's... <laughs> this run on wood and water and yeah. fire. <laughs> and it's a case. And then here's a Ford tractor that uh, Merlin Taylor rebuilt. <clears throat> and it was one of the very first Ford tractors made. <clears throat> Beauty. Beauty. <clears throat> well, Ken. Oh, let me tell you about this engine. A Honda. A Honda, a two-cylinder Honda, and both of them fire at the same time, kind of like a a, uh, huh. That's uh, uh, like, like one of those. Uh, it's like uh, a single single one, but it's uh, but it's got two of them going the same. Yeah. Huh. 
And Merlin That's Taylor unusual. gave us all these. He rebuilt them. Uh huh. There's a case, a Honda 1970 case, 446 lawn tractor. This is a 1990 Honda 4518 lawnmower. Yeah. And this here, now we're getting down here to the And then Bill all Wyckoff arc. donated <laughs> the Shaw. Uh, that's got a six cylinder Wisconsin engine and it's rope start. And then we got one over here that's got a generator on it and it's an electric start. Oh, here's something that I did, I got this uh, f from uh, Leon and Rebecca Allen. Uh -huh. And this is a cedar. It's a walk behind pulled with one horse. Looks like another one of your mannequins. And I made this mannequin, but uh, see this wheel is gear driven and it'll, this here will make the ditch It'll drop the seed. This will cover the seed up, and that will tamp it in the ground. It's a lot like the little garden track, a garden cedar I have. It's just bigger. That's all. Is that right? You know they have garden cedars you can get for your little home garden. Yeah. See, I made this just to hold it. Sure, that's just your support. Well, Ken, I think we're we're, we're about. Tell me about this thrasher, and and we'll let it go at that. I think. Oh, this uh, a trot that gave us that, and uh, when we had it, we were sitting up there in a chair, and Steve uh, Farrell's wife said, I saw a mouse run out of that, because <laughs> it came out of, in the farm. <laughs> and then, so I went and got some mouse traps at Ace Hardware, two of them, baited them, put them on the other side, the next morning they were gone. And we've never found them. <laughs> so then I go get the biggest trap that Ace has got, and I bait it, and the next morning we found a pack rat about that big. Oh my goodness. We don't like rats. <laughs> I don't mind a mouse here or there, but I don't, I don't cotton no rats. <laughs> So I've looked all over, and here's just some of the tools. Yeah, this is for working on this machine? Yeah. See, this here is a thrash machine. It, it was made in August the 13th of 1895. All right. Well, Kenny, I think we're going to wrap it up there. I sure do appreciate it. Golly, you've been nice. It, uh, real good to hear you talk about uh, the, the uh, Parsons Historical Society and the Iron Horse Museum and uh, all the stuff you've done around here. I've always been amazed by you when I first met you that you are the driving force behind the Arboretum and behind the museum here. And... Uh, uh, I haven't heard anybody say any different, so you, I, I don't want you to start now. You're the man that made all this happen, and I, I want to thank you on behalf of all the people that, that uh, enjoy this. Thank you.